County Board of Commissioners to order. We'll start with the flag pledge and John will have you lead us down in the EOC. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the, to flag the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the Republic with for which it stands. One nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Wonderful. Thank you, Commissioner Lipke. And uh, let's just uh, check everybody's microphones. Commissioner Lipke, we know yours works. Commissioner Dranel? Loud and clear. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Commissioner Kolars? Yes. And Commissioner Kemp? I am present. Wonderful. Thank you all. It's good to see you all. Uh, reminding folks uh, to silence their cell phones and also to mute their microphones uh, if they're not speaking uh, during the meeting this morning. I'm gonna just go quickly through the uh, meeting notice. Due to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic and resulting state and federal de emergency declarations and guidance about limiting unnecessary person-to-person -person contact, the April 13th, 2021 Nicola County Board meeting and drainage authority meeting will be conducted under Minnesota Statutes 13B.021, meetings by telephone or other electronic means. County Board and Drainage Authority members will participate by telephone or other electronic means. Coming back to the agenda, uh, first I'll ask our uh, Interim County Administrator, Ms. Lankham, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, no, there isn't, Mr. Chair. And uh, members, any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I uh, welcome a motion to approve the agenda. Kemp would move it. Lipke seconds. Kemp moves, Lipke seconds. Uh, Abby, if you would take the role on approving the agenda. Kemp? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Drennel? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the uh, agenda is approved. We turn now to the consent agenda. Are there any items that members would like to remove from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll invite a motion to approve the consent agenda. Kemp so moves the consent. Kemp seconds. Kemp move, Kemp, uh, Lipke moves. Kemp seconds the motion to approve the consent agenda. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Lipke? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Drennel? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the uh, consent agenda is approved. Uh, public appearances, I'm looking on the screen. I don't, not seeing any uh, remote public appearances. Abby, is there anyone in the meeting room by chance? There is no one requesting to have a public appearance at this time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Abby. We'll turn to our business first, a motion to approve the separation agreement with uh, Jamie Hafner. Maybe I'll turn to the personnel committee for a motion and a second. So, Mr. Chair, I would move we accept um, the separation agreement with Ms. Havner as presented. Second. We have a motion, a second motion, Drannel, uh, second, Kolars. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion on the motion, Abby, would you take the roll, please? Drannel? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the motion is, the motion passes, the separation agreement is approved. Uh, we're gonna turn to board appointments for vacant positions and I'll turn to the county uh, attorney, if I might. Uh, we were trying, we were talking this morning to remember what was the specific position uh, to be filled this morning. And if, maybe if we could turn it over to you. We're, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, under our um, the employee um, policy uh, handbook, um, there is the provision for the respectful workplace policy. And under that policy, the board had designated the human resources director as the recipient and initiating official for investigating um, those complaints. The board should um, make a appointment as to who department heads who might have staff reporting um, harassment or uh, respectful workplace violations. Um, if the, if the department head receives the report for an employee or an employee needs to report um, something against a department head, there needs to be a designee uh, for receipt of those reports designated by the board in our policy in light of the current vacancies of the county administrator and human resources director. 
And I suppose I should ask the question that someone will ask, uh, did you have a recommendation who you thought would be appropriate, leaving it to us to make the decision? Uh, it has been um, in, under some of the policies that exist in other counties. Um, it is sometimes directed to the county attorney or other designee designated by the board. Okay. Commissioners, I'll ask you if you have any questions or, or comments. Seeing none, uh, let, let me then confirm it. Are you comfortable as county attorney or designee to have that designation? Mr. Chair, I would be comfortable um, being the recipient of those um, reports while um, the board acts to replace those positions. My understanding would be then that I can make that appointment unless you would recommend that we do that by a vote. I believe that it was done by a vote when okay. the human resources um, director was um, appointed in that role. So perhaps to follow prior practice, I would recommend a vote. Perfect, Mr. thank you. Mr. Chair, I would move uh, the county attorney as the appointee. Okay. A second, please. I'll second that. Wonderful, we have a motion by Kemp, a uh, second by Commissioner Lipke. Uh, to uh, appoint a county attorney or designee uh, in that position. Uh, Abby, if you, oh, I'm sorry, any discussion on that motion? Sure, if I could, thank you very much, Michelle. Thanks for taking on uh, this honor. Are you taking it on in a temporary state until we get a new administrator? Is that what I'm hearing you say? I believe that that may be the, yes. It would only be temporary. Um, while the board looks at um, the structure of that reporting system as part of an overall policy review um, of the employee handbook itself. Yes, yeah, so it's an, it's an interim uh, acceptance of this position as we move forward. I'll support right. it. Any other uh, discussion? Seeing none, Abby, if you would take the roll, please, on the motion. Camp. Yes. Lipke? Yes. Drennel? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes. The motion is adopted. Um, members, before we move on, uh, I went through the board committee positions and uh, identified the ones that are now um, vacant uh, with the uh, resignation separation agreement of Jamie Hafner. I'll just quickly tell you, there weren't many. Uh, there is now the, an opening on the building committee. I don't feel pressed that we need to do something on that one right away. Uh, there was one on the insurance committee. Uh, Commissioner Camp, you and I, um, the interim county administrator, Ms. Lankhammer, and Heather McCormick are on that committee now. So I feel we've got some good coverage now, and we could talk about whether we need to add to that coverage. and. Ms. McCormick, of course, I'd be interested in your input as well if you felt we needed to do something quicker. Uh, beyond that, um, personnel committee, and I would remind folks, the personnel committee at the moment is uh, Commissioner Drannel, Commissioner Kolars, and Ms. Hafner, and Commissioner Lipke, you're an alternate on that committee. And then finally, safety and security committee, and we're grateful to uh, Susan Sunderland, who is um, uh, taking those responsibilities that uh, Ms. Havener had on the Safety and Security Committee. I'll ask Mr. members Chair? if they're... Yeah, please. Uh, if I'm the alternate, am I the alternate also for Ms. Havener? No, I don't believe so. I believe you're the alternate for a commissioner. Otherwise, that okay. would create a uh, quorum of a the quorum. board. Okay, thank you. And I forgot something up upstairs, Mr. Chair. I'm going to take 30 seconds and run and get it. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, other commissioners, any other open positions or appointments that you would like to ask about at this time? If not, we'll turn to the Proclamation for Crime Victims Rights Week. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, as we have in the past, um, I'm bringing before the board a proclamation asking the board to declare uh, April 18th through the 24th as Crime Victims Rights Week. 
Um, as the board knows, a couple of years ago, we applied for and were successful in receiving a grant for our crime victims uh, coordinator. Um, she does an um, outstanding job of coordinating, getting notices to victims, providing information about the criminal justice process to victims of crime. She has also um, taken the lead in getting information to community uh, groups and doing a number of presentations, at least pre-COVID, um, advising people of their um, of ways to protect themselves from identity theft and fraud. Um, so we've done a number of those presentations as well as getting information out um, to the community at various community events um, throughout the year. So I would ask the board to adopt a, pro a proclamation um, declaring April 18th through the 24th as Crime Victims Rights Week. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt the proclamation? So moved. We'll make the motion. Temple uh, second. Commissioner Dranel moves. Commissioner Kemp seconds. Discussion on the proclamation. Well, I'll thank you, uh, County Attorney, for bringing this forward and for the work that you and your staff do uh, in working with the public and uh, issuing these important messages. So thank you very much and to everyone on your staff. Uh, Abby, would you please take the role on approving the proclamation? I'm sorry. I forgot to unmute. Drennel? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the proclamation is uh, approved, adopted, and uh, thank you again, County Attorney. Thank you. Uh, we're going to turn to administration, the hiring process for County Administrator and Human Resources Director. And if I could just lay a little bit of foundation, and I'm going to turn to Ms. Landcammer to uh, fill in some details. Uh, I would recommend that we've uh, We've heard uh, from uh, more than one organization that does searches for executives, including county administrators. And I think that perhaps each of us in one way or another has been contacted or received in information from an individual or company concerning uh, our desire to uh, proceed with an expeditious search, a thorough search uh, for a, a permanent county administrator. We had, I had talked about a three-phased approach at one point in which Ms. Landcammer would serve as our first interim, that we would then uh, search for a second or more uh, longer term interim. And then at about six months out from now, uh, we could anticipate being in a position to bring on a permanent county administrator. That timeline may change as we discuss the information that we have learned uh, really on a daily basis. So if it's all right with you, commissioners, I'd like to turn to Ms. Landcammer to allow her to talk a little bit more about the information she's received, and then I'll turn to you all to share information you've received. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, essentially, there are three co consultants available to do this type of search for counties, um, for county administrators and for human resources director. Um, with that, it's Baker Tilly, GovHR, and David Drown Associates, or they also go by DDR. Um, essentially, from the information that I've received with the basic conversations I've had, it's about a four-month process overall with it. Um, if we were to go ahead, or if the board was to go ahead now at this point to move forward with some type of a proposal or a contract with one of the consultants, they uh, have indicated that potentially you could have a position filled by mid-September for a permanent position with that. They did um, make some comments regarding the HR director as typically they would encourage that you hire a county administrator first, then go um, and hire a higher um, human resources director, even though you could start the process as you're finishing up the um, county administrator, you could open the position allow individuals to apply, but that final decision will then be made by the county administrator to ensure that there is a sound and supportive role in that position with it. Overall, um, as far as cost, they uh, do have, they do vary a little bit um, depending on the position, both with the county administrator and the human resources director. There are some guarantees. Um, one ind has indicated they would do a 12 month guarantee if the position was vacated. The other consultant has indicated that they would do a two year 
uh, guarantee with it. Um, there are uh, local counties that are both using these um, consultants and have been happy with the process overall. But if you have specific questions, I can go into more detail, but initially um, it's about a four, four and a half month long process to fill a county administrative position at this time. If I could just ask you, could you just, uh, restate the, the three entities? The three entities that are essentially that offer these type of services are Baker Tilly, GovHR, and David Drown Associates, or they also go by DDR. Before we move on to questions, uh, I just want to get a fourth organization, Commissioner Camp, if I might. Uh, I believe we've heard from uh, the service co-op. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I believe I forwarded a packet. Um, not citing specifics, but they're very similar, offering guarantee and other items um, that um, Ms. Landkammer has already indicated. So they're very much on par with uh, what's being offered by the other um, search organizations. So commissioners, let me open up the, yes, Commissioner Lipke. So the service co-op, you mean the one in North Van Cato? That's correct, John. Thank you. Yes, that's the uh, South Central Service Cooperative. Right, right. Commissioners, I'm opening this up for discussion. Mr. Chair, if I could. Um, Commissioner Kolars. Thank you. I'm familiar with uh, Baker Tilly on some of the items that they've worked with the county on. I've uh, known David Drown because of their work in the region. Have not heard of government HR before Mandy uh, made the information available. And to know that South Central Services has, uh, uh, has had some experience in finding uh, folks for replacement. Um, it seems that Baker Tilly, David Drone, uh, both uh, have experience in county administrator work. My knowledge, it may be limited, uh, that South Central Services does mostly city manager and school superintendents, um, although I understand that there may be some other areas that they're delving into. Thank you, Commissioner Kolars. Commissioner Dreadley, you're unmuted. I didn't know if that meant you wanted to speak. Um, I guess I like to see information quantified somehow. So if we had something to compare attributes, um, kind of how you my said, brain works. An, incl uh, an inclination I had, Commissioner Dreadley, was to ask two of us to do that very type of thing, put together a packet of information on the potential services that would compare apples to apples for each and then come back to the board with a report so that we could proceed. We do have a workshop next week and Ms. Lankhammer was uh, very much on the ball and said, you know, we could talk about, you know, try to get this gathered in a week and then come back on Tuesday with more of that, that kind of comparison, I think Commissioner Drenel, you're describing. Yeah, uh, you know, and I know speed is of the essence also, but we need to be thorough at the same time. Um, if we could have it by next week, that'd be cool. I absolutely agree. I, I, we certainly could set a, uh, a goal. And then if we need to have more time to get all the needed information, we could take more time. But I would perhaps say, let's, let's start with that goal of next week and see how we do. Uh, Commissioner Lipke, you had your hand up. Yes, I think, you know, as long as that South Central is in our county, we should give them any benefit of a doubt to see if they can do the job for us. Commissioner Kolars? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if we do have that discussion on the 20th, it would be good, I think, uh, to make a decision if we could before May starts on the 27th at our next regular board meeting. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Kolars. Commissioner Kemp, you're unmuted. Yes, uh, I agree. I think the other part of this is if we can reach a consensus during our um, work session, is it timely and appropriate to have a special meeting to appoint if there's consensus um, that group that we would choose as soon as possible in even sooner than our next board meeting? 
Commissioner Kemper, are you referring to the folks who will put together that comparison work? No, I, well, the comparison work I'm assuming is what we will ultimately present at our discussion meeting uh, on um, our work session. But if you have other thoughts, maybe then I'm confused. So I okay. need that have that clarified then. Okay. Commissioner Dranel, you're still unmuted. I didn't know if you wanted back in. No, I just didn't get there. Oh, okay. Uh, Ms. Lankhammer, your your thoughts or as we've been chatting about how we might proceed? Um, my just initial comments are, I do have some of that information already compiled. And so if the commissioners, if there is um, two individuals that are interested, I can work with them just to finalize that information. Commissioners, if you're comfortable, what I what I plan to do then is ask uh, Commissioner Kemp and Commissioner Lipke to work with our county administrator because you've all got, gotten information at some point uh, to work on a document that does compare the attributes as Commissioner Dranel described and uh, given time parameters, if we can have that presented during the workshop next week, I think that would be keeping us on a good trajectory. But I would like to get commissioners thoughts before making that decision. Well, Mr. Chair, if, you, if I could, um, I'm understanding that two of these entities have already provided information to our interim administrator, which is um, the way things should happen, right? Um, so I would guess that anybody else who's interested uh, would do the same. That's right. I, I, I don't want to speak for Ms. Lankhammer. I know that DDR sent a substantial amount of information. I don't know how much Baker Tilly sent or government. I don't think government HR did. Mm -hmm. No, Mr. Chair, you're correct. Um, GovHR has not submitted anything, but Baker Tilly has sent a preliminary outline of their information. Okay. So Commissioner Kemp, I understand that maybe you're, or Commissioner Kolars, maybe you're suggesting that uh, Ms. Lankhammer has two of these documents of varying levels of sophistication and that Commissioner Kemp could share with Ms. Lankhammer the South Central information. Uh, I, I would like to have some commissioners involved in this um, process uh, to assist Ms. Ms. Lankhammer in doing it. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to serve in that role as, as one of the voluntolds on that particular item. But um, okay. I guess I, and I, I want to ask another question, but maybe we need to address this piece first. Sorry. Okay. I, I would be happy also. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask the three of you then, uh, Commissioner Kemp, Commissioner Lipke, Ms. Lankhammer, to just coordinate. Um, Ms. Lankhammer will take the lead on gathering the information and bringing it together. But I'm speaking for you and saying uh, I'm sure you'll uh, welcome some uh, folks to communicate with as we're doing this. Great. Uh, Commissioner Kemp, I believe you had a question. I, I, I guess my question would be most of these organizations do a pre-hire interview with the full board as uh, looking for the background, what the expectations are of the board and to reach that consensus. So, and Ms. Landcammer, you can indicate if I'm wrong about that, but that's what I've seen in most of these. So that everyone will have input in, in a potential hire and, and setting some of those standards. So really um, our small group's role is merely to try and select a provider or recommend a provider to do those particular services and then go forward from there and then follow their protocol. Is that what that's a, all that's of us a, understand? I think that's a good description, Commissioner Kemp, yes. And then, so I guess let me continue on here and I may be getting the cart out in front of the horse, but with the timelines that we're seeing and, and the least preliminary information with a shorter window of time needed, <laughs> excuse me, um, with a shorter window of time needed, um, would it be appropriate to discuss whether we need an interim to the interim uh, or is that a separate issue? Mr. Chair. I think it's a fair conversation to have at this point because I, I think that it's 
the degree to which we can be as transparent as we can uh, about what's happening, I think is best for staff, best for our community, uh, best for individuals involved. Uh, so yes, I will, I can kick that off if I might, Commissioner Kep, and say, I had been expecting a six month process. I'm now thinking we're, we may be closer to a four month process. And with that, uh, I'm open to conversations about whether we simply go, uh, whether we change that three phase model. Yes. So I'd be interested to hear from commissioners what you think. Well, I would I would support that, Mr. Chair. Um, I think consistency is important for our staff, um, for our constituency, and um, the learning curve uh, for anybody to come in as a temporary. Um, I think maybe just too steep. And so I, I would support uh, assuming that Ms. Landcammer, if she's willing, would serve as our interim until a full-time replacement is appointed. I think that's to you. Um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Kemp, I would be willing to continue to do that role. Um, have several conversations with department heads and with the uh, staff and feel that we can move forward with the assistance of the board to ensure that there are no items missed as we move forward with the search. Well, I'm, I'm very comfortable with our, uh, with our staff and, and your skills in doing that. So um, that's how I stand on the issue. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Kep. Commissioner Lipke. Well, I, I liked your three-phase approach, but now Mandy's basically has got her feet wet, and we'd probably be looking at at least another month, you know. So then, like Commissioner Kemp says, that person would have to get used to the way things are. So I think if Mandy is willing to stay, we just let her stay that long. Thank you, Commissioner Lipke. Either Commissioner Drannel or Commissioner Kolars, I don't want to cut you off. No, I, I'm comfortable with, with, I guess I'm more comfortable with a two-phase approach than a three-phase. Um, yeah. As soon as we can get things done and move, start the ball rolling forward, the better. Um, thank you, Mandy. Um, we got a lot dumped on you here quite quickly, and you hit the ground running very well. Mr. Chair, I would concur um, on another subject. We're really not going out for requests for proposals from these entities that might provide something. Um, so we're just, um, people are becoming aware of the fact that Nicollet County is looking for an administrator and those entities um, that um, do this kind of work are providing the information. I just wish that uh, I just want, would like to make sure that they would contact our interim administrator so that she could share with this ad hoc committee that you've named today. Wonderful. And I think that's exactly right. I think you described it well, Commissioner Kolars. I'm just looking, I was looking for a way to continue this ball, ball moving forward and provide uh, Ms. Lancamber the support that I think the, the position, the position and the search require. And I, you know, I want to thank you. I'm going to say, Mandy, I'm going to use your first name. Thank you for your willingness. You've been a tremendous team player. And I want to thank all the folks on this call, all the department heads and staff. This has been a time of transition. And uh, the success that Ms. Lancamer will have is uh, certainly dependent upon the wonderful working relationships and the extra work that everyone here has been doing. So I know we thank you all for that. And uh, with that, what I will propose is we, we're going to go forward with this. We're going to uh, hopefully have some information to share during our workshop next week uh, that we can then, as Commissioner Kolar says, decide on the next step in terms of retaining a, uh, an entity to help the county with the search. I will say for the uh, public or those who may be uh, listening or watching this later, uh, I do believe it is in the best interest and the, is consistent with due diligence that we retain a consultant rather than try to do this search on our own. I don't think those searches tend to go well when you're trying to hire the top executive of uh, an organization of the complexity and size of Nicollet County. Uh, certainly the board has had you know, an opportunity individually to think about that, but I'm going to say here in the open meeting, I do not support uh, trying to do this on our own. I do think that the county needs help 
assistance of someone experienced in order to do this well. Commissioner Drannel, you unmuted that, did you? Yeah, I certainly agree. We need to do our due diligence and, and that's not in our skill set at this point. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chair, I also agree in that same context. Let me ask if there are any, if there are any of the uh, department heads or county attorney, if anyone on this call wanted to add any thoughts as we're moving forward on the hiring process. Mr. Chair, I <clears throat> believe that the process that you laid out will um, serve the citizens of Nicollet County well to find a new county administrator. And I also believe having worked with Ms. Landkamer, both in her um, traditional capacity as well as in the interim period of time that she will serve the citizens well in that capacity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just one more item here, if I could. So please. Second half of the uh, administration item on the agenda talks about the human resources director. Are we in a spot where we could um, look to name an interim in that position? Um, or is that something that Mandy has an opinion on? Um, Mr. Chair, I have done some preliminary investigations, also reached out to some other counties regarding their human resources director and then the Association of Minnesota County. They are gathering some information regarding potential um, con candidates if the county was interested in having an interim come in. Otherwise, they're just be providing me the basic information and assistance as we move forward. So I guess my question is, do we have people on staff who can handle us to the next handoff? Commissioner Kollars, I believe so. Uh, but I think we do have to have a discussion. I think that discussion really can be teed up for next week as well, perhaps about the, the other position. And the reason I'm saying it that way is, I think it'd be a good idea for us all to think individually and come back next week to talk about what we might be looking for in that other position. I would certainly think we're looking for someone with significant human resources responsibilities uh, as you may know, uh, we had also tied the an admi assistant administrator role to that position. Uh, and this may be a prudent time to have a conversation as to what we'd be looking for in that search going forward. Uh, in terms of an interim or uh, bringing someone in on human resources matters, I think that's a, an evolving question that Ms. Landkammer uh, and uh, staff have been having uh, just about who's going to do what and really putting together, I think, a, a welcome team approach to solving, uh, to addressing the things that need to be done. And I want to thank uh, Ms. McCormick. I know you've been very helpful on uh, these matters as well. So I think that's a little bit more evolving than the county administrator position. And I would welcome a conversation uh, next week as we, as we have time to think about the steps that we lay out and it also gives staff uh, another week to experience this and to uh, have, a, again, an evolving understanding of the roles and responsibilities that the county needs to uh, consider. Uh, Commissioner Kemp, you're unmuted. As I usually am because I'm on a headset, so sorry about that. But oh, uh, I, 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 would, I would concur. I think, I think as long as um, uh, Ms. Landkammer and the current staff and the current department heads continue to support the process. I think they have an understanding of that. I think there's merit to having those discussions um, amongst the board because maybe the expectations and what we've learned to date maybe have changed. So I think it's important that we have that discussion and then, um, then decide how to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kemp. Mandy, do you have anything else? Oh, yes. else? Okay. Well, we, we don't have anything to add, so we're going to move on then to Chair's report. And uh, my report is that uh, things seem to be going quite well. Uh, and I'm very uh, grateful to all of our staff and all of our department heads and uh, had an opportunity to join uh, a department heads meeting uh, last week, which was very informative. And I'm grateful for the insights that... Uh, 
our uh, department heads were able to share. Uh, also uh, was able to join a Zoom call with uh, folks over at HHS. And that was a wonderful conversation, some great ideas, great questions. And uh, as I said on uh, Friday, and I'll say today, uh, very grateful for all their hard work in a variety of areas, uh, obviously including public health and, and the like. And uh, we did talk a little bit about all the work that the county does in terms of food security and housing, in addition, and on other services, veterans and services and the like. Uh, so we had a wonderful conversation last week, and uh, my sense is that uh, folks are uh, understanding that we're trying to prioritize health and safety, but at the same time, making sure that we get the work done. Uh, Commissioner committee reports. I'll start Commissioner Lipke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> was on an extension interview. We interviewed four people was at the Lower Minnesota One Watershed meeting, a uh, special meeting April 1st. I went to the Ditch 77 meeting at the ISG headquarters in Mankato, a soil and water meeting, and happy to report that the uh, committee for hiring a new Ag Production Systems Extension Educator offered the position to Emma Severns, who has been our interim here. Uh, she, I was gonna try and get the, the uh, you know, her history a little bit, but hopefully we can have her introduce herself at one of our next meetings. And uh, she is from Good Thunder originally. And according to my lovely wife, she is the first non-male in this position, and we wish her well. Great, thank you, Commissioner Lipke. Commissioner Dreadl. Um, Various meetings and issues over the last three weeks. Um, I also attended the One Water, One Plan uh, conference meeting. Not a whole lot, but this week promises to be busier. Thank you, Commissioner Dreadl. Commissioner Kolars. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. First off, I'd like to uh, thank the county employees, as you have, Terry, and uh, know that the county board has your back and the good work that you're doing. We appreciate it. Also, a special uh, thank you for the publication of the recent County Line newsletter, which was just published, and it looks like it's really shaping up to be a good communication piece for our for our. Uh, citizens. Uh, we had the Rita board meeting on March 30th, our special board on the first Maple and today's county board. And um, I thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kolars. Commissioner Kemp. Well, again, I, like my peers, are incredibly grateful to our staff who have, without reservation, stepped up and done the work that needed to be done has continued to maintain their focus on our mission and been incredibly gracious uh, in taking on roles that they didn't know they were taking on when they said that. And I look specifically at you, Mandy. I think uh, I think you typify what we are so grateful for and all of our employees having done that. And thank you again. That being said, my participation in my last meetings, South Central ECB, um, the multi-county HRA, our special board meeting, um, MRCI, both finance and board meeting, educational stakeholders meeting, and uh, the SECB finance committee, and the AMC education and training committee. That is the extent of my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kemp. Uh, I'd like to turn first to our county attorney. Uh, anything you wish to share with the board? Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chair. Um, in addition to being Crime Victims Rights Week next week, April is really a month that's been set aside and dedicated to recognizing those impacted um, by crime and preventing, um, preventing further crimes. Um, April is Se Sexual Assault Awareness Month and um, <clears throat> The county will be um, recognizing Denim Day, which is April 28th, 
a day to um, wear jeans and recognition um, and bringing awareness to the issue of sexual assault. Uh, that day started after an Italian court uh, reversed a sexual assault conviction because a, the victim was wearing tight denim jeans. And the court reasoned that it could not have been non-consensual if she was wearing um, tight jeans with the removal of those jeans in the course of the assault. And so um, April 28th is dedicated to raising awareness of uh, sexual assault. Um, April is also Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, and so I look for materials that will be um, here in the atrium as well as both of the county libraries um, about um, the, all three of those topics um, to just bring awareness generally throughout the month of April. Um, as I noted earlier, um, Ms. Peterson has done a lot of work about bringing awareness to scams and fraud. And I, again, will use this as an opportunity for everyone to remain very vigilant about um, fraud attempts. Um, I know Commissioner Drantel published a, a post about um, receiving a call, I believe it was to get information uh, regarding, um, I don't remember what, but uh, some a, a call that was clearly a scam. Um, We've certainly seen an uptick in those scams attempts not to provide information over the phone and a cold call um, asking for that personal information, as well as an increase in the number of unemployment fraud claims um, that are re being received by employers as well. So I just urge everyone to continue to remain vigilant um, as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Grant, did you, were you going to chime in on that fraud story? Mm -hmm. I got a call yesterday and the caller ID said Lee Center, Minnesota, and he was from Medicare. I didn't know Lee Center had a Medicare call center. <laughs> wanted, wanted numbers off my shiny new Medicare card that I just received in the mail, the red, white, and blue one. I asked to speak with his supervisor and then I got some other gentleman and I finally admitted I was a retired CIA officer and then they hung up. <laughs> Last time I was an FBI, this time I'm a CIA. I just might be an angry woman the next time they call. But yes, please share that with your loved ones because it really sounds real. Um, mm -hmm. It's a spiel. It's frightening. Just frightening. Well, that's helpful advice. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Ms. McCormick, you've, you and your folks have taken on additional responsibilities because I know I forwarded a bunch of emails to you. So I first want to thank you for stepping in uh, because payroll and bills and everything that all have to be taken care of all the time. So thank you so much. And I wanted to give you an opportunity if there were updates you wanted to share with the board. Uh, no updates at this time. Um, next week at our workshop, we'll have the American Rescue Plan on the agenda for further discussion. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Copa, you're all back out staff. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Lipke. Uh, have, excuse me. Heather, uh, is my understanding the townships are going to be getting money this time also? Yes, that's what it is sounding like. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the same deal where if they don't spend it, then we can ask for them to forward it to us? Or you have no idea yet? That question was asked. At a meeting last week, and it sounds like they won't will not be able to do that this time. Okay. Right. Thank you. At least with the information we know at this time. Thank you for all your hard work. Ms. Copen. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, I only have one little update. Uh, just a reminder that next week, uh, the 22nd, I'm holding an informational only meeting for County Ditch 86A, and it's on the proposed bills that were sent out and what their financing options are. Um, if you, if anybody gets any calls on those, I've been, my goal is to talk to every single landowner. There's about 70 landowners. Um, these are larger bills and, and uh, have a high impact financially on a lot of people. And so I want to make that effort to reach out to anybody. So if anybody's reaching out to you, most likely you can certainly answer questions, but send them my way. I know that the Zoom meeting isn't, uh, isn't uh, perfect for everybody. So either by Zoom or by phone, I'm gonna reach out to every landowner. And so we've been getting quite a few calls and um, so far so good. If people are thankful to, to know what their options are and get kind of an explanation of what's up next on the billing process on the 86 days. 
Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lipke. On to 86A, I also have gotten some calls, but that's mostly concerns that there are enough pumps running, that there isn't flooding this spring. And I have been in contact with ISG and hopefully they can smooth it out with the landowners and figure out some, some ways to make it work. Because the, the pumps aren't gonna be here till May 15th at the earliest is my understanding. Plus there's a long period to install them. Th thank you, Commissioner Lipke. Any other questions? Uh, just a reminder on the informational meeting, I'll be leading that informational meeting and I sent calendar invites to everybody and you're more than welcome to attend. It is a posted meeting, although obviously no decisions will be made and um, no board action will be taken. It's purely informational for the landowners. That's perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, before I turn to meetings and conferences, I just want to thank Ms. Lewis for uh, we were talking not only about the county line, thank you, Commissioner Kolaris, but a wonderful social media presence for the county is growing. I know, uh, at least on my own Facebook and Twitter feeds, I see uh, regular postings. I wanna thank uh, Ms. Lewis for that. Uh, meetings and conferences, commissioners, I don't know of any offhand. Terry, some Kolar. of us, uh, thank you. Some of us probably will have AMC committees. Uh, we've got, I've got one next week with this research committee for AMC. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be taking part in that one. I don't know of any larger meetings until we get to uh, so the summer. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move to per diems and expenses. I invite a motion to approve per diems and expenses. I would move it. I'll second. Pam moves, Lipke seconds, approval of per diems and expenses. Any discussion? Seeing none, Abby, if you would please take the roll. Pam? Yes. Lipke? Yes. John All? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the uh, motion is approved and uh, we'll turn to adjournment of the board meeting. Pam, but move to adjourn. Second. Kemp, Kemp moves, Kolar seconds. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Drunnell? Yes. Lipke? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the motion is approved. The commissioner's meeting is adjourned. Uh, I will call the drainage authority meeting to order. Uh, we have one item, that, if I understand correctly, the consent agenda. So I'll invite a motion to approve the consent agenda. I will move it. Second. We have a motion by Kemp, second by Lipke to approve the consent agenda for the drainage authority. Abby, if you would take the roll, please. Kemp? Yes. Lipke? Yes. John All? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Marl? Yes, the consent agenda is approved. There are no other items correct on the agenda. Uh, with that, uh, I always forget this. I am so bad whether we do this by motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Abby, let's do one more roll call. Lipke? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Kolars? Yes. Jono? Yes. Morrow? Yes, the drainage authority meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for your work. Have a wonderful week.